Grace, this is yours truly, Prophet Khan, Pastor Khan, Overseer Khan. It really doesn't matter. But I am the senior pastor of Kingdom City Church, where our mission is to know God, activate people, and change cities. You are getting ready to watch a word that is going to be preached that I believe has the power to change your life. We're unapologetically a new covenant church where we believe in what Jesus has already done and the finished work of Calvary. And because of that, it gives us the confidence to declare that we are the righteousness of God. We're right here on your screen. You should see a little uh, a subscribe button where you can subscribe to make sure that you stay in contact with us and know what we're doing. But I pray that you hear a word today where your life is changed. And keep on watching. And I promise you, if you watch it, watch it again, watch it again, sooner or later, you're going to come and try to be a part of us. So I love you. More grace. I know that may not have been for everybody. I know everybody don't understand that. But if you've ever been through a situation where the devil thought he had you, if you've ever been in a situation where you were down to your lowest, when I say it's up from here, you know that the best is yet to come. I want you to look at somebody again and tell them eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of man. All God has in store for you. I need you to tell him one more time. Tell him it's up from here. I wish you would praise him like you believe it. I said I wish you would shout like you believe it. I wish you would give him glory like you believe it. Y'all ain't making enough noise in here. You got to shout like you believe it's already done. You gotta praise him like it's already done. You got to give him glory like it's already done. Come on and give God glory in this place. Come on and shout in this place. Come on and lift him in this place. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory. I wish I had some people in the back. Glory, glory, glory. We gotta create this atmosphere. Anything can happen in here tonight. Healing will take place tonight. Souls will be saved tonight. Somebody's gonna get set free tonight. I said it's up from here. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. All right, let's get ready to sing and give God praise. It's time to lift him up and give God the best you have. Come on, clap those hands right here. Come on. If you know these songs, I need you to sing them. Desperate for 
rightful place. Everybody, come on, sir.
you would make a joyful noise in here. I said I wish you would make a joyful noise in here. Every worshiper who has two hands, lift them up and lift your voices. We need God's presence here. We want him here right now. Open up your mouth and worship your God, the God of your salvation, the God that is of your peace, the God of your joy, the God that is your strength. Come on, everybody together. Come on. I can't move without him. It is in him I live. It is in him I move. It is in him I have my being. I'm nothing without him. Yes, Lord. I said I'm nothing without him. Everybody who understands that is a truth. I'm nothing without him. Come on, live your voice in here. Everybody in here. Oh, that's it. Come on. Lift your voice in the room, in the room. In the room. for you you are our hearts one desire only you can satisfy only you can satisfy everybody sing you come on everybody say it come on tell them I'm thirsty for you Come on, sing thirsty for you. Thirsty for you. Everybody say you. Are our Only you can satisfy. Only you can satisfy. Only you can satisfy. Three parts. Come on, sing it. You are our hearts. Sing. For you. for you, everybody singing. You are our hearts. Are our One desire. One desire. Only you can satisfy. Only Come on, sing it, y'all. Say twelve.
Worship him. Hey, worship him. Tata Mani Osea. Hey, oh, Namako Sai. Namado Sio. Shadamo. Oh, Yanamanaki Osea. Namado Sika Namo Saya. Namako Sia Namo we need you. I wish somebody would cry out for him now. lifted in here. Come on, sing every hour. Say and I say. Come on, say it and I. I wish you would make it personal. Tell them I'm lost without you. Say it. Come on, everybody. Come on, let's press in this moment. Say I, say. I'm desperate. Yes, Lord. I need you today. Come on, tell him I say. Come on, I'm desperate for 
for you. Really need you. Really need you. Really need you. Say. I'm lost without you. Come on, tell us. I'm lost without you. Come on, tell him. I'm lost without you. Yes, Lord. Come on, tell him. Say, I'm desperate for you. I only need to hear the voices of desperate people who know that without him you're nothing. Lift your voices right there. Shh. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey, everybody. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, he loves that. Oh, he loves that. Hey, I said he loves that. Just to be in your presence. Just to be in your presence. Just to be close to you. Just to be right where you are. Just to be near you. To know that you want to be with me. That's all that matters to me. Come on, worship in here. Come on, everybody, 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 everybody. Come on, come on. Oh, I hear people crying out tonight. Somebody really does need him. Somebody didn't come to play games. Somebody came because they need a touch from him. Somebody came because they need a move of God. This is not a show for somebody. Somebody didn't come to be seen. They came to see Jesus. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. I know we're not singing a song. This is your moment to sing your song. Come on, everybody. Come on. Somebody's been waiting all day to get in this very presence. You're here now. You're here now. You're here now. You're here now. Woo. one quick favor before we go anywhere. Can you grab one neighbor by the hand and look at him in the eye and say, neighbor, if I had to tell you what my 2023 looked like, we'd be here all night. Just tell him I don't look like what I've been through. Tell him about this praise I'm about to give him. It's to show you what 2024 is about to look like. She would give praise. I don't know about you, but I'm not going into this year doing the same thing I did last year. I've been through too much. 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 
his presence is all over you. Tell him if his presence is over you, why don't you celebrate it? Celebrate that he chose you to rest upon. Come on. To rest in. I said celebrate him. Celebrate him. Clap them hands, oh you righteous. Oh, glory. Hey, hey, hey. Glory, 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 glory. Glory. Glory to God. Everyone, everyone in the building, resting to your feet as we get ready to honor the mouthpiece that brings heaven and earth together. Amen. We're so grateful, privileged, pleased, and honored to have such a one to spearhead this movement of God here, amen, at KCC and around the world. I want you online, here in the building, let's celebrate the gift of God, amen, the voice of God, the mouthpiece to bring heaven and earth together. Can we celebrate God's gift to the body of Christ? And we are privileged and pleased and honored to receive God's prophet, general, the devil's nightmare. Come on, prophet Brian Conn Jr., hey. clap your hands and praise him. Say, neighbor, something about that name, yeah. Something about that name, yeah. yeah. Something about that name, yeah.
God we serve, angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him, look down your roar and say he's a mighty God, don't be scared to say that now, tell somebody else that man is mighty, hey hallelujah, amen, I'm glad that the God I serve is not weak, he ain't no Pee Wee Herman, Amen. He's not impotent, but he's God and God alone. Amen. Matter of fact, he said, I'm God and beside me. There is no other. So he is faithful. He's a man of his word. He do what he say. And guess what he don't do? He doesn't tell no lies. If he makes you a promise, he's going to do exactly what he said. He's going to, I just need 30 people to jump up and shout, glory! There's a praise on the inside that I can't keep to myself. There's a holler from the depths of my soul. So excuse me if I seem a little giddy, maybe even strange. Praise is the way. Praise is the way. When I can't say thanks, I just jump. If I can't jump, I run. If I can't run, I wave my hand. But if I can't say a word, y'all sit down. Amen. Hallelujah. If I can't say a word, I'll just wave my hands. He's a good God. And we love him so much for his goodness toward us. I am blessed. Tell somebody, I am blessed. I am blessed. Not trying to be blessed. Not trying to be blessed. Ain't going to be blessed. I am blessed. What's that? Uh, uh, let's go straight to the 
word of God so that we can understand it. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 says something that if we believed it, it would change our heart posture. Now, I want you to know God don't want your mad money. Amen. amen. You don't want to give it, keep it. Amen. Say amen to that. Amen. amen. He said, but this I say, he which soweth what? Uh, put, a little, put a little bass in your voice. He which soweth what? Fairly. Shall reap also. Fairly. But he which soweth shall reap also. Now that's the word of God. I determine my harvest. You got that? I determine it. I determine if, if I want to receive something big, I got to sow big. If I want to receive something small, I got to sow small. I was telling someone the other day, I, I said that one thing we have to be careful of is sometimes when I challenge you to sow a seed, sometimes we sow the seed from our savings. Now watch this. And even though it's the seed and you sowed it from your saving, it doesn't have the same effect because you don't live from there. You don't live out of your savings. Are you understanding that? Amen. That's not where you live from. You don't live from your savings. You got the soul from the place you want him to increase. I hope y'all get what I'm saying. Amen. So you got to sow in the field that you want to read. Bailey, I just, Bailey, I just sung your song. You wasn't here. You want to sing it with me? You do? Let me tell you how, how religious she is. <laughs> I was at the house the other day, and they were trying to get her to sing some kind of worldly song or something, but I was there. And I don't know, some little cowboy song or something. Then they were trying to get her to sing it. She would not sing it. I said, sing it, Bailey. She wasn't singing. She said, Jesus is my. <laughs> she, she got discernment. Amen. She said, I ain't going to sing that song in front of Prophet Khan. <laughs> Uncle Prophet. Say amen. All right. But anyway, so you got the sow from the field you want to reap. And I don't live from my savings, so I don't sow from the savings because I want God to provide in the place that I want him to increase. You understand that? Now, it's easy. It's very easy if you got $40,000 saved to give 1000 from there. Because you got 40000 put over there. So it's easy to sow from that. It's easy to sow from that. But when you got a budget every two weeks. All right, I'm going to come on this side. Yeah. Well, when you got a certain amount of money that you live from every two weeks, and you already got that money budgeted for where you want it to go. And then the man of God comes say, give a thousand dollars. God ain't calling it from the savings. He calling it from the place you don't want to touch. Because until you don't want to touch it, it ain't a sacrifice. So the Bible says it like this. When Abraham went to offer up his only son, Isaac, that word only in the Hebrew is yakid. And yakid, watch this, means in the Hebrew, that which you would hold back for yourself. I don't want, I don't want Ishmael. Because Ishmael ain't the promise. I want what you connected to. Amen to that. All right, so when you trust God in your giving, always remember that. God wants you to get to a place, and I want to say this, 
it's sometime only in our communities that we have to be challenged. Come on, mama. It's sometime only in our communities. Amen. You look like a church mother today with that hat on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Sainted mother. Praise the Lord. But uh, it's only in uh, these atmospheres, us, that we have to be challenged to give. You look at other churches in other arenas. They, 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 it's one big church in uh, Dallas, Texas, a major church. Pastor gets up and preach. I mean, he's taught on the offering and he teaches on giving, but they don't even have a time for offering. They just got an offering bucket at the back of the church because the people understand a mindset of giving. Say amen to that. So you want to get a mindset. You want to get in the mindset of as soon as I come to the house of God, just like you prepare your clothes and prepare your hair, makeup, anything else, lashes. Well, you don't got to prepare them. They already own, right? Yeah. No. Well, it depends on if it's the strip or the individual. Right? 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 You prepare it. Right? And just like you prepare for everything else, you should say, what shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits toward me? Lord, I dare not come before your presence with an offering. Amen. I, I, I can never pay for what you do. I always remember that. Whenever God asks somebody to say, uh, I'm paying for a miracle, I'm paying for a prophecy, I tell them, you can't afford one. You don't have enough money to give to change your life. Say amen to that. Amen. If you paralyzed, I don't care how much money you got, it can't make you walk. Say amen to that. Amen. So we're trusting God and we understand that when we give, it's going to come back to us. Luke chapter 6, 38 says it like this. It says, give and it shall be what? Yes. Given unto you. How? Yes. Come on. Yes. Come on. Yes. And what? Yes. Who going to give to your bosom? Yes. Look down your road. Say, one of y'all going to bless me. Yes. Don't be scared to say it. Come on. Look at him. Say, you are supposed to bless me. You know you had a dream to bless me. He came to you in a dream and gave you my name. Told you to bless me. You're sitting on my money. Say amen. Clap your hands. It's giving time, church. Come on. Amen. Need an orphan envelope? Raise your hand. Somebody's going to bring you one. Hands up high. There's several ways to give on the screen, but everybody, let's get ready to give unto the Lord. Say hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Now you determine your harvest. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, blessed Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, blessed Jesus. Thank you, majestic master. Lamb of God, you are faithful in all of your ways. I accept Jesus' name. God is good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Anybody else need an orphan envelope? Raise your hand. Hi, hi, hi. <clears throat> if you need to know how to spell million, that's M I L L. I-O-N. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. You have what you 
Very important to know that. I'm so excited about the word tonight. Who, who glad that you go to a church that ain't under the law? Amen. Amen. I am unapologetically under grace. Amen. And don't let nobody make you feel bad. Now remember this. Now remember this. People who are under grace got to be gracious. All right. I remember that. So be gracious. You can't be beating people up because they don't understand. You know why? Because you used to didn't understand. Amen. You can't be that. You judgmental. Well, you used to be too. Amen. I be hearing, I be hearing myself preach. I say, I can't believe I'm preaching that. But, you know, what are you talking about? Amen. But uh, you got to be gracious. Everybody don't get it. I'm turning this lapel on, by the way, uh, for the streaming. Uh, but you got to understand that so that um, you can be gracious and be nice to people and don't don't beat them up. Because some of y'all be ready to argue. They quote a scripture. You be like, that ain't what that means. <laughs> and you just found out what it means. <laughs> you just found out. You trying to act like you's a perfect. You need to look that up in the Greek. <laughs> let, let me show that to you in the Hebrew. <laughs> Come on, stand on your feet. Let's get ready to give unto the Lord. Let's say our confession. Because you don't have what they say, you have what you say. And I want you to tell somebody on the left and the right, increase is my portion. Increase my portion. Amen. Tell somebody else on the left and the right, I will always have. I will always have. And say, this year, this year I, will I will possess anything I want. Anything I want. Amen. God said we are supposed to possess our possessions. Amen. Amen. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Are y'all cold? All right. Wave your hand if you say it's cold. How many say it's cold? About five people. Now, y'all know. Y'all know good and well. It's going to get hot up in here. Oh, I'm ready. I hope y'all ready. And look at the person on the left and the right and say, if you got something in you, it's coming at you tonight. Is it? Amen. Just because they're pretty don't mean they ain't got a demon. Don't never pay that no attention. I done cast some demons out of some pretty folk. Woo. Pretty and full of the devil. It's true, I'm telling you. Yeah. I walked up to this lady one time and uh, where was I at? Jackson, Mississippi, she's a pretty lady. I walked up to that lady. I say, ma'am, you're so pretty. She said, thank you. I say, you got a demon. <laughs> she looked at me and said, I, I said, I promise you, you got a, I said, you got a demon in you. I said, I'm looking at it. And the Lord told me to get my Bible and put it on her head. And I got my Bible on her head. She went, Ugh. I said, I told y'all. <laughs> Everybody started running from the Bible. <laughs> Amen. All right, you have what you say. Hold your seat up behind there. Of course, we're going to walk around from offering as, as that is our custom. If you're giving by credit card, there's someone positioned on the left and there's someone positioned on the right so that you can sow your seed in faith, believing God for a miracle. You have what you? All right, so let's say with power, with, with, with emphasis, with, I mean, with everything you got, on the inside of you, I want you to make your confession. I want you to say it strong. What is our confession? I'm a giver. I'm glad about it. I wouldn't trade it for nothing in the world. Because I am a giver, I expect increase all the days of my life. Holy Ghost, right now, grant unto me rebates, refund, money in the mail. In every area. Stop. Bonds, exchanges, real estate, contract, lawsuits. Royalties, 
prosperity all the days of my life. My name, God is talking to somebody and giving me uncommon favor with uncommon people. I ain't broke another day in my life. I am multi, multi, billionaire. Call that money in. Money coming to me. Starting from the back, follow the directions of the ushers. Please don't make nobody walk over you if you don't have to. It is our custom that everyone walks around. Come ready to give your seed unto the Lord. Come, 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 come.
Ice, go back down the way you was. I sing praises to your name. Come on, y'all. Sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. For your name. For your name. For your name. Oh, yes, it is. And great. I'm excited about your future. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. In the Lord, wonderful. God is faithful. He's a man of his word. And we are excited about what he's getting ready to do. And I miss, I'm ready for the miraculous. Yeah. Amen. And I'm ready for whatever God's getting ready to do in this place. Tell somebody, get ready for your next level. Find somebody else and tell them, get ready for your next level. Have a little power in your voice and say, get ready for your next level. Um, I always uh, attempt to uh, make it my business to acknowledge everybody. I just always um, have so much going on spiritually that I'm always trying to figure out the right time to say something or when to communicate it or whatnot. But there's several pastors here from the CCIF uh, Fellowship who came to join us and be a part of our New Year's, uh, uh, our New Year's, uh, huh? Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, you may be seated. His, his name, OJ, his name, O.J. Simpson. O.J. Simpson. One time the police stopped him and asked him what his name was, and it was around the time the O.J. Simpson case was going on. He said, what's your name? He told the police, O.J. Simpson. They were going to put him in jail just for saying the name was O.J. O.J. Simpson. They did put you. Yeah, they put him in jail because he said he was O.J. Simpson. Boy, I said, they hate O.J., don't they? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Prophetess Jackson, come on, give her a great big God bless you. <laughs> Pastor Stanley from Hollywood, Florida. That's right. That's right. Dr. Clark from, is it Port St. Port? Yes, right. Port St. Lucie. Give Dr. Clark the great. The Millers from Virginia. Uh, it's Angier, right? Angier. Angier, North Carolina. That's right, Angier. No, the McLeans from Angier, North Carolina. And one of our newest pastors who are part is Pastor, stand up Pastor Canyon from Franklin, New Jersey. Amen. 
stand up. Uh, Sister Minnie, what you standing up for? Amen. Just, well, just sit down. She said, I was just standing up. Well, just sit down. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Give on. Amen. 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 She said, I was just standing up. Well, just sit down. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, Pastor Bell, he's from Vajosta too. Come on, give him a great big God bless you. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I think I got everybody. Prophetess McCants is here. Give her a great big God bless you. Prophetess Cooper is here. Pastor Elijah, come on, give him a great big God bless you. Amen. Amen. Pastor Human is here. Give him a great big God bless you. Uh, and Pastor Wiggins finally decided to join us. Come on, give him a great big God bless you. You should see him. I don't know if y'all seen it. I don't know if that was Sunday night or Monday night. When, when did I start flowing? Sunday night. Did y'all see Pastor Richardson? When I started moving in deliverance, you see him come right into the stage. He, he was ready. He said, I'm ready to cast some demons out. I said, not tonight. Just give me some time. Give me some time. He was ready. He, you know what he was ready to do. You know, he was ready to do that. You know. Y'all know. <laughs> Y'all know he was ready to do that. Yeah, Pastor Richardson, God's getting ready to bless you. <laughs> Take that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Can brother say it? Sing, y'all. Do get it, get it. Amen. Amen. Come on, give him a hand. He loves himself. Give him a great big God bless you. He loves himself. Give him a great, great, great big God bless you. Now, you got to give him a hand clap. He loves himself. Amen. We thank God. Thank God. Him and Pastor Butler, give him a hand too. Praise the Lord. Y'all know he loves himself too now. Pastor Butler loves himself. Amen. Amen. They get along real good. Pastor Butler, brother said, who they love they. <laughs> Y'all know. <laughs> I, I, I met Pastor Butler. Let me tell y'all something. And I'm going to get in the word, okay? Let me tell you something. Y'all know, I, I used to have that, uh, I used to have that real fancy car. And I, you know, I would only drive it like maybe once a month. And uh, Pastor Butler used to say, you better than me. Because I would drive that car every day. And you got to understand something. When, when, pa when Pastor Butler drive a car, first of all, he cleans it every day, okay? That, that car get washed every day okay and when he gets out the car he makes sure he gets out in a way that you notice <laughs> you know he opens the door sit there a while <laughs> then he gets out and slowly close, and you speak to him, how you doing? You know? <laughs> Praise the Lord, daughter. <laughs> More grace, daughter. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's get in the word of God. Look at somebody and say, I'm ready for the next level. Thank you. I'm taking it my business to minister the word to us so that we have a good understanding of who we are. Because remember, that's very important. Your identity is very important for you to understand where God wants to take you. And I want you to know who you are and who you belong to. One thing that I really want to register in your spirit, it is a little uh, chilly. It is a little chilly. Uh, just for now. I mean, just for now. I know it's going to be, but I'm just telling. I ain't telling you to turn on the, what is on right now? What is on? Y'all know Pastor Kelly always messing with the thermostat. Now, the, if you ever got a problem with the temperature, it's on Pastor Kelly, okay? Pastor Kelly, what is on? 70. Cool. Cool. Well, can we just turn it off? It's going to burn up. Okay. Y'all know I'm, te I'm teaching. So during the teaching moment, you usually are a little cool. 
because I'm teaching. Now, you know, some of you are never cool. And that's a personal issue that you should make the body of Christ suffer. Because that's personal. That's per you, you shouldn't work the whole world to revolve around you being hot all the time. Man, you, you be sweating coming from outside. You know what I'm saying? Amen. You walking, ooh, it's hot out there. 40 degrees, 30 degrees outside. You come in sweating. That's a problem. And I command you to be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Receive your miracle today. Amen. Thank God for communion. But anyway, so um, uh, just we'll work it. We'll see what goes. But I, I want you to understand. See, I am righteous. All right, and the reason I want to teach this righteousness and really let it get in your spirit is because once you understand who you are and how righteous you are and the love of God is communicated in an environment and the grace of God is communicated in an environment, it puts you in a place where your faith begins to work effortlessly. Are you understand that? It brings you to a place where you're not trying to perform to get God to do anything because you understand that it's already done. So I must admit that as a result of me teaching this, it is blessing me and it is really blessing me to see people's lives being changed because they are actually falling in love with their daddy. Yeah. 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 That they're no longer just seeing him as a God or they're no longer just seeing him as a judge, but they're seeing him as father. You understand when he told them how to pray, he said, this is how I want you to pray. Starting off our yeah, so you need to understand that. Look at somebody and say, he's my, daddy. he's my daddy. All right, and you need to know that. Let that register in your spirit. He's not just your God. He's not just your judge. He's not just the king of the universe. He's not just the ancient of days and the king of glory, but you have an intimate relationship. We don't have the spirit. We now have the spirit of adoption whereby we cry what? Abba Father. So that's wonderful. And how many people know it's easy or should be easy to have a relationship and to have a conversation with your father? Amen. You should not come before the presence of God sneaking to talk to him, wondering if he's going to receive you. Say, I have been, I have been. accepted in the beloved. All right. So how many of you know, and I want to say it again, say, I am righteous. I am righteous. Now, do you know that? I mean, do you know you're righteous? Yes. All right. Are you righteous because of your works? No. Are you righteous because you do right? No. Are you righteous because you died every eye and cross every T? No. Are you righteous because you keep the Ten Commandments? No. Are you righteous because you don't smoke or drink? No. None of that makes you righteous, correct? So you need to understand that. But somebody say, what do you mean by that? Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Look at what it says. It says, for he hath made him to be sin, what? For us. For who what? Who what? But he became sin for who? That's right. So say, I am righteous. All right. Now watch this. The Bible declares he was made sin. Now, if you ever want to understand about yourself, look at him. If you want to understand how you became righteous, you need to pay attention to how he became sin. You missed that. I said, if you want to know how you became righteous, you need to pay attention to how he became sin. Well, how did he become sin? Did he do something wrong to become sin? Did nothing wrong. But he was made sin. Y'all missed that. Without him doing anything wrong, no one lived a perfect life better than him. Yet because he took my place without him ever doing wrong, he was made sin. So if he was made sin without doing a sinful act, I have been made righteous without doing a righteous act. Tell somebody, I was made righteous. Get that. Understand that. 
He was made sin. Did nothing wrong. But he was made sin because he took your place. And just like he was made sin, you have been made what? Righteous. Say, I am, righteous. I am righteous. Come on, say that with confidence. Say, I am, I am righteous. Now, a lot of times when I teach this, the people immediately begin to say, you tell them, folks, they can do what they want to do. That's, I never said that. That's what you heard because you want to police the saints. See, you want to be people Holy Ghost instead of allowing God to deal with people. You can't keep nobody. If they're going to live right, they're going to do it because the Holy Ghost has challenged them to do it, not because they're scared of you. Because they'll leave you and go right back to doing what they were doing. Say amen to that. So if you Understand Jesus. Always look at him. Remember, if you look at Jesus, you can walk on water. Keep your eyes on him. How did I become righteous? No, no, nothing of myself. It's the same way. Now, I am righteous. But the way that Jesus became sin is the same way that I become righteous. Now, he became sin. When did he become sin? Was he sin when he was born? Was he sin when he was in his ministry? When did he become sin? Come on, when? When? That's right. On the cross is when he became sin. Who knew no sin? Did God treat him bad at the cross? Yes. I ain't, want you to, I ain't want you to get a wrong answer, so I said it for you. Because I know some of y'all are like, no! Yes, he did. I said, did God treat him bad at the cross? That was a terrible day. Because when he became sin, God no longer dealt with him as a son. He dealt with him as sin. And it was such a tragic day that the sun refused to shine. Midday became midnight. That, that's how bad of a day it was because God treated him like it was. The sun went into hiding. Sun refused to shine as a result of how bad God dealt with sin. And the Bible declares that he hang on that cross. Why? Why? He had to hang. Had to hang. Had to hang. He had to be suspended between heaven and earth. Rejected by men and rejected by his father. Had to hang in the middle. Hallelujah. Had to be suspended. Earth couldn't handle him. Neither could heaven handle him. He wasn't sin, but he became what? Sin. That's right. Became sin for you. Now say, I am righteous. Very important. It's not much more than that. That's very simple. That's why you are righteous. Now. Did God, one more time, treat him bad at the cross? Yes. Okay. So if God treated Jesus bad at the cross because he became sin, how much more is he treating you now that you are righteous? I don't treat you like sin. I treat you like my choice son. Because the same manner of hate that I had for him when he became sin, I love you more than how much I hate sin. 
I love you so much that I made my son become sin for you. I told somebody the other day, can you imagine how much love this man has that he created a man knowing that the man he created was going to cost him his son. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Uh -uh. Because see, God is omniscient. So Adam sinning did not pop up on him. He knew Adam was going to sin when he created him. Yet him knowing he was going to disobey him didn't stop him from doing it, knowing that the only way man would be redeemed was going to cost him his son. Yet he loved you so much that he said, I'm going to create you anyway, knowing you're going to disobey me and then give you the choice to choose me. Oh, that's love, that church. That's love there. Amen. I, I let you choose whether you're going to accept what my son did. I don't force you to choose me, but I let you make the choice. Tell somebody that that man loves me. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4 verse 6. Look at what it says. Just as David also describes the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes what? How? Apart from works. You can't fight the book. You can't fight this. Blessed. David also talked about it. And give, give me Psalm 32 real quick. I think that's what, when David gave the psalm, when God gave it to him in Psalm chapter 32, verse 1. Look at what it says. Blessed is he whose transgression is what? Sin. Whose sin is what? Lord. Look at the next verse. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no now go back to Romans chapter 4, verse 6. The Bible declares in Romans 4 and 6, blessed is the man. The blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from, Word. apart from. Word. Now he said there is a man who is so blessed that God made him righteous apart from his works. Then he came in the next verse and look at what he said. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are what? Whose sins are what? Uh-oh, now, here's the first thing. Stay with me, whoever back there, you're going ahead of me. Look at what he said. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven. Tell somebody, he forgave me. He forgave me. Come on, say that with confidence. Say, I am forgiven. I am forgiven. I've been asking that. I've been walking up to people every day, asking them, are you forgiven? Because you need to know that. And your forgiveness is not based on how many times you tell God you're sorry. Because according to God's standard, you sin more than you know it. See, I know y'all be sinning, but time, folk be telling me I live a holy life. I'm telling you, to God is filthy. All of your righteousness. Yeah, how wonderful you living. I know it impressed church folk. And then you look at people and you be saying, they not living the life. I'm over here saved and they not living the life. What life? The life that I now live is by the faith of the Son of God. I can't live this life unless he lived the life in me. Without me, you can do Somebody asked me, they say, do you live holy? I said, no, he lives holy. Hell yeah. You didn't hear what I just said? I don't live holy. He lives holy in me. And greater is he that is. Got nothing to do with you.
So because your sins are forgiven, you are blessed. But here's the next part. He said your, your lawless deeds are forgiven, your sins are covered, but he gave two reasons. He gave two reasons why you bless. He gave two reasons why you bless. Look at the next verse. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. Hold on. Two blessings. First blessing is my sins are forgiven. Second blessing is if I do sin, he don't count it against me. Hold on, hold on. Y'all quiet. I ain't scared. I'm not scared. I'm not, I'm not scared. I, ain't, I know you scared, but I ain't scared. You scared. You scared. I ain't never, 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 never scared. I ain't scared. Listen. Okay. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. Say, I am, I am blessed. Okay, now, sin for, his sins are forgiven. And God says, I don't impute sin. Here's the question. I got a question. Does the man to whom the Lord not impute sin, does that man sin? Yes. Yeah, he sin. Yeah, he sin. Uh, let's forget that man. Do you sin? Okay, so, so this man has the sin. He has the sin. Why do I know he has the sin? Because there is a man whose sin the Lord does impute. But there is a man who is so blessed that God doesn't impute sin. There is a man. And David said, blessed are those. There is a man that God said, no matter what you do wrong, I will never scold you. I will never, never be angry with you. Because I can't be angry with you and put Jesus through what I put him through. If I'm mad at you, then I'm not a just God. Cause all my anger with you was put on Jesus. All anger, oh, I'm telling you, not just, somebody say, well, that, that's for the sins before I got saved. But what about the sins after I got saved? Somebody say past, past. Present, present, future. future. You know why you know that got to be true? Let me tell you why that got to be true. Because anybody who was born after Calvary is future. You wasn't born when Jesus died. So he couldn't have just been covering your past sin because when he was on the cross, your sin was going to be future. But he will not impute sin. Say it loud. God ain't mad at me. Don't receive your prophecy. There are voices out here, and I'm going to get in trouble. But I'm, I'm a new covenant prophet. Let me show you something real quick. Let me, I showed y'all this the other day. Give me Isaiah 61. Hurry up. I'm going to show you something. I ain't planning on going here. Isaiah 61, that's 66. 61. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to what? Keep going. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
Keep going. Uh huh. Say up. Isaiah 61 said, Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he said everything Jesus was going to do. You see that? And when you get to verse 2, he says, To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Go to Luke chapter 4. Verse 18. Luke 4, 18. Jesus now is going to repeat Isaiah's prophecy. You better hear what I'm about to say. And notice what he said. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the who? To say that liberty those who are, look at the next verse, to proclaim what? Watch the next verse. Then he stopped. Jesus closed the book at Jubilee. You just read in Isaiah 61 that that was not the end of the prophecy. The end of the prophecy, go back to Isaiah 61 2. 61 2, Isaiah, the end of the 61, he says, and the day of, come on, and the day of, of our, Jesus never mentions that. Jesus never mentions judgment. Because that ain't what he came to do. He sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. When he closed the book, you got to close the book. And every prophet who's prophesying judgment against the body of Christ, against a man of God, you've been sent from hell because God is a good God. Oh, I'm finna get in trouble. We should not be glorying in what bishops and pastors are, and leaders are going through. We stand with the man of God and we fight for them. We fight for them. You sitting up there sitting up there talking about God judging God judging he getting these preachers in order if God get them in order he got to get you in order but I don't know if you know what God is a good God and I don't care what they did when they woke up brand new mercy hey glory touch not mine and on it You don't side with the world when they talking about our generals. You don't side with the world when they talking about preachers and men of God. If they fight them, they're fighting you. Sit down. Send us to preach good news. Care who they are. Everybody want mercy till it till till it happen at your house. But blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain. No about you, but I need mercy. Be seated. I'm sorry. Let me just open it up. And I got happy. Tell your neighbor, God ain't mad at you. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all getting me off focus. But let me tell y'all something. God, that's why we need intercessors. Don't care what God showed you. Turn it. 
Hallelujah. A real prophet is an intercessor. Turn that thing. Devil, you after my pastor, but not on my watch. Devil, you after my man of God. You after my woman of God. But in the name of Jesus, move every distraction. Move every Delilah. Y'all ain't talking to me. Intercede for your man of God. Be seated. All right. Call yourself saved. Thomas, I told you that God showed it to me. Why are you rejoicing in the downfall of a man of God? Let's come on to the text. Say, I am righteous. Be seated. God is not mad at you. God, God ain't mad at you. Somebody told me the other day, they said, they say if God don't judge America and don't judge the church, he got to repent. This is what they say. You know, this is what they say. If God don't judge America, if God don't judge the church, he got to repent to Sodom and Gomorrah. I say this. If God judges America and if God judges the church, he got to repent to Jesus. He going to have to tell Jesus sorry. Because Jesus said, behold, John said, behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. Tell your neighbor again, God ain't mad at you. Be seated, I'm coming. God ain't mad at you. God ain't sitting in heaven with a hammer trying to beat you down, looking at everything you do wrong. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute sin. God's not holding your sin against you. And I don't know if you don't know it, that's good news. Well, Prophet Karn, be, uh-uh, Prophet, you can't say that because people are going to start sinning. And I'm trying to tell you, the only reason people do that, you know, Prophet, prophet can't do that now because people are going to go crazy. And they're just going to start doing what they want to do. Now, they already are. But the issue is, we don't know that he loves us. See, if you think that God, do you, listen to me. Do you know how many people in church have done wrong? And when they did wrong, they immediately felt crushed, felt condemned. And guess what they started doing? They, they, and then they messed up again. And then they did it again. And then they started saying, well, what's the use of even coming? Ain't no need to even come in the church. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Because ain't no, ain't no difference in the way. And the only reason you feel that way is the enemy has trapped you into condemnation. Right. Right. I always talk about, y'all know, I, I was a fine brimstone preacher. Amen, I put everybody in hell. Man, you chew gum, I put you in hell. Hey, Amen, you had on cologne. That was lust in a bottle. You couldn't do that? I put everybody in hell. And I sit up and listen to myself preach now and hear myself. And I say to myself, how many people did I lose? How many people was I a stumbling block to? Was I an offense to? Because I gave them a standard that heaven didn't even require. I didn't trust God to work on people. So I tried to work on them. And I tried to point out their sin and tell them, you got to do this right and you got to do that right. Instead of allowing God to perfect 
those things which concerneth you. You say you've been in this 20 years now. But who you are now is not who you was 20 years ago. You have matured. Y'all better talk back to me in here. I say that often to the mothers of the church. KCC is a church. Young women, young men. Now you can't beat them down. Amen. Because you've been hot before. Some of you still hot. But don't nobody want you no more. But all I'm trying to tell you. Hallelujah to God. <laughs> Amen. Be merciful. Be patient with people. Walk them through this. Let them know I've been like you before. Hail my shoddy eye. I've messed up before I done came to church after I did something didn't have no business I know what it's like to feel condemned but I'm glad he came and got me rescued me didn't leave me where I was be seated amen God is not counting your sin against you just give me a couple of more minutes. I know y'all ready to go home. God is not counting your sin against you. Why? He can't because he's already punished Jesus for your sins. The law has been satisfied, and because the law was satisfied, God can't bother you. Your righteousness has been imputed. Tell somebody, I am, righteous. I am righteous. He said it again in Romans chapter 4, verse 7. Look at what he said again. I want you to see that again. He said in Romans, blessed are those. Somebody shout those. those. Now, some people say, well, David was talking about himself. No, he wasn't. He didn't say, blessed is I, am I. He said, blessed are David is talking about there's a people in the future. There's a people post-Calvary that I envy. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 There's a people that I wish I had your benefit. Here you are reading the Bible, telling me something you wish you was in David's day, and David is saying, I wish I was in your day. Because I don't hold your sin against you. My God, that's good news. That word blessed there in the Greek, it, it literally means to be envied. David said, I envy you. Because when I messed up, it was held against me. I was punished. God gave me mercy, but I still lost my son. God gave me mercy, but my kingdom was still split. The sword never left my house. My sons end up raping my granddaughters. All of that was a result, somebody shout, sin. sin. All of it was a result of sin. I'm not mad at you. So David is saying, I envy you. And, and if you ever want to see the mercy of God or the grace of God in its purest form, look at Abraham. Let, 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 let Abraham be your example because Abraham is operating 430 years before the law. Pure grace. And if you look at his life, he was never punished. As a matter of fact, the Bible called him God's friend. 
the liar. I'm talking about the liar, Abraham. Y'all quiet. I mean, he, he didn't even obey. He didn't even obey God's first instruction. Leave your family behind. He brought Lot. And he ended up being a lot. Okay. So he disobeyed the first instruction. Did God punish him? He lied about his wife. God never rebuked him. Matter of fact, he rebuked the one who took his wife. But never rebuked Abraham. Then he lied again. That's a lying joker. But guess what? God didn't rebuke him. Matter of fact, he delivered him. No record of his fault. As a matter of fact, if you look at the life, if you look at the life of all the people in the Bible, I was thinking about the other day when I was looking at Hebrews 11 at the hallmark of faith. I hope y'all know this. It said, by faith, Israel came through the Passover. By faith, they conquered Jericho's wall. But if you notice the whole text, he never records Israel's failures. The hallmark of faith only records their victories. Never records what they did wrong. He only recorded their accomplishments. Because heaven has no record of your failures. Oh, God. Tell three people around you, God ain't mad at you. Your sins, I will remember. I don't impute your sins. Halabashandia. Not mad at you. I promise you there's a people in this generation that's about to get free. I'm telling you, there's an army rising up to break every chain. Yeah, break every chain. Your sins I don't remember no more. God ain't angry. Somebody asked me, they say, what was the, what was the determining factor that made you make the transition? The Lord spoke to me in a vision one day had me in a field with a bunch of sheep and showed me me with a rod in my hand beating them. And he said to me, I didn't tell you to beat my sheep. I told you to feed my sheep. But slavery conditioned us into getting beaten. We love getting beat. We so used to abuse that the preacher beat you down and you come back the next week to get beat some more. You're going to hell. Then you come back next week. What you preaching today? You're going to hell. Amen. I wonder what the word is next Sunday. You're going to hell. Say it loud. God ain't mad at me. I'm not telling you that there's no chastening. If you don't get chastened, the Bible calls you a bastard. Go to Micah chapter 6, verse 5. God said, in order to know my righteousness, you need to pay attention to this. Micah chapter 6, verse 5. Oh, my people, remember now what Balak, king of Moab, counseled. Please hear me. There's a deliverance about to hit this room. 
what Balak king of Moab counseled and what Balaam the son of Beor answered him from Acacia Grove to Gilgal that you may know the righteousness of the Lord. He said, if you want to know what my righteousness looked like, pay attention to the story of Balak and Balaam. And that'll show you my righteousness. You remember the story. Both of them were Middle Eastern. And the Bible declares, listen to me, that the king of Moab saw Israel coming on his property. And they were always afraid of Israel because they knew that God was with them. So here it is, the king of Moab minding his own business. But then here is Israel, king of Moab, see Israel getting ready to come to town. And as a result of him seeing them come to town, now Israel didn't fight nobody. Israel didn't bother nobody. The only time Israel bothered anybody is when they would bother them. You understand that? Are you listening to me? Yeah. Here it is. King of Moab see them walking and decides what I'm going to do is I'm going to hire a witch. And I'm going to curse Israel. I'm in the Bible. The name of them was Balaam. He said, I'm going to get Balaam to curse Israel. And the Bible says that while he was trying to curse them, God made his mouth bless them. He got hired. He got hired to curse. So he got ready to say, I and God to Ilababasha. That's what God going to do to everybody trying to come against you. He turned his mouth and made him bless him. God made his mouth twist. Y'all sit down. Made his mouth twist and bless him. God turned his words. So guess what he decided to do? He said, okay, let's go to another mountain. And he tried to do it from that mountain, and it didn't work. Then he went to another mountain, went to three different mountains, and it never worked. And this is where the scripture came from that we like to quote in church. But this is what it meant. Curse them. Look at what he said in Numbers 23, 18. Numbers 23, 18. Numbers 23, 18. Numbers, glory. Then he took up his oracle and said, what? Wow. Rise up, Balak, and hear. Wait, now this Balaam talking to the king that hired him to curse God's people. He said, rise up, Balak, and hear. Listen to me, son of Zippor. He says, God, next verse, whoever back there, come on. He said, God. Is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Hath he said it, will he not do it? Has he spoken it, shall he not make it good? And look at the next verse. Behold, I have received a command to bless. He hath blessed, and I cannot bless it. to your neighbor and say, can't nobody curse you. Work your hoodoo. Do your witchcraft. Tell your lie. God is on my side. Be seated. Say I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Say my sins are forgiven. Sins are forgiven. Say it louder. Say my sins are forgiven. Sins are forgiven. Say it again. That's right. Amen. Amen. Y'all don't know which one to say, do you? Y'all don't know whether to say I'm blessed or my sins are forgiven. Whatever it is, both of them are true. Say I'm blessed. I'm blessed. My, sins my sins are forgiven. Now, 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 now. The minute, listen to me. The minute you know. I'm talking about no. 
the minute you are secure, confident that your sins are forgiven, everything begins to flow. Your whole relationship with God changes. There's an intimacy because you're not afraid to touch him. Think about this. When you cross somebody, it's hard to start a conversation. Because you know you've offended them. Y'all, y'all not get what I'm saying? If I know I did you wrong, it's hard for me to just come up to you and have a conversation with you like I never done nothing. Because I know I've hurt you. Okay? Now, God is saying, before you offend me, I have already forgiven you and I don't keep a record. How easy would it be for you to be in a relationship with somebody who don't keep records? Somebody who tells you before you cross me, I've already forgiven you. Hold on, let's go deeper. I know your frame and I know you're going to cross me. I know you're not perfect because I made you and I'm telling you, I'm not going to hold it against you. That's a good God, church. Tell your neighbor, God ain't mad at me. I know I sound redundant, but I'm going to say it till it get in your spirit. God ain't mad at me. Now, if 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 with the blood of bulls and goats he treated Israel like that how much more is he treating you with the blood of Jesus if with the blood of bulls and goats nobody could curse them how much more with the blood of Jesus do you have no reason to be afraid of no hoodoo, voodoo, witchcraft, black magic, white magic, contagious magic, candle magic? I don't care what you do. It ain't going to work. No weapon that is formed. Tell somebody I'll never be defeated. He says, he says, don't go after the era. Don't go after the era of Balaam. That's what he said. Don't go after the era of Balaam. What did Balaam learn? That you cannot curse whom God has blessed. Balaam couldn't do it. He went to, he went to several mountains, even ended at Mount Pisgah. And could not curse him. Matter of fact, look at the next verse. Look at verse 21. He came back and said after he left Mount Pisgah, verse 21. Look at what he said. He Bohusha. Helemandala Bikisha. I saw it, but I didn't observe it. He has not observed iniquity in Jacob, nor has he seen wickedness in Israel. The Lord, his God, is with him, and the shout. Not that it wasn't there. He's just telling you, I didn't observe it. Because the blood of bulls and goats. Israel would send up sacrifices every day with the blood of bulls and goats, and it would cover them. It's not that Israel wasn't doing no wrong. Y'all know Israel kept on murmuring. 
They kept on complaining. They were great murmurers. Always complained. Always had a problem. Sin was in the camp. But God said, even though I see it, I don't see it. I know it's there, but I don't see it. And he said, even when I get ready to do something, the shout of a king is among them. That was Jesus. He said, I can't do nothing to him. Shout to your neighbor, say, you've been covered under the blood. Now, they were covered under the blood of bulls and goats. But you've been covered with the blood of the precious lamb. Look at the next verse. God brought him out of Egypt. Who he brought out? The, the, the murmurers. The complainers. Not because they were perfect but because they were his people. He didn't never bring Israel out because of their goodness. He brought them out because of his goodness. He brought them out of Egypt, and they had strength like a wild law. In Psalm 105, 37, look at what it says. In Psalm 105, 37, glory to God. In Psalm 105, he also brought them out with silver, and there was none Nobody was sick. Nobody was even weak. Granddaddy was saying, watch out, Grandma. Hobah Shada. Tell somebody, I'm getting younger. I noticed something. I noticed something. The day I noticed something, I, I was studying the Bible today, and I noticed that, go to, uh, just throw this in at you, go to Psalm 91. Give me around about verse, uh, maybe, maybe 16, is that 16 verse? With long life. Wait. That's a good scripture. But I notice that that scripture is after Psalm 90. Give me Psalm 90. Go around by verse 8. Keep going. Keep going. Psalm 90 say you only get seven years. Seventy years. Seventy years. If by reason of strength. 80 years. That's 10 years. But that's the man who he has not shown his salvation. Y'all missed that. Psalm 90 man might get 80. But Psalm 91 man with long life will I satisfy and show him my, that word salvation is Yeshua. I'm going to show him Jesus. I need you to prophesy to your neighbor and say, I got at least 120 years. You have what you have. Can I, can I, do you know this? Do you know this? Watch this. Do you know this? <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> Don't say it. Okay. My mama just looked at somebody and said, I might have a baby at 100. I said, Ooh. Oh, my shy. Handalosia. Candidate your shape. Oh, my shy. I don't want no more brothers. I don't want no more. I don't want no more. <laughs> hey. Shut up. Amen. Long life. Now, do you know this? Watch this. Have you ever taken the time to notice? 
I'm going somewhere. Can I have a couple more minutes? Did you, have you taken the time to notice that the lifespan of people didn't get short until the law came? Before the law, they was living for hundreds of years. But when the law came, it shortened the years. But guess what? We ain't under the law no more. Oh, y'all better talk back to me in here. And if they live long then, we can live long now in our right mind. Tell somebody I'll never have Alzheimer's. Say I have a sound mind. They were strong. They were strong. Israel was strong. 80, 90 years old, hundreds of years old, with no cane. No wheelchair. The Bible say they were strong like an ox. Say I'm strong. Say I am strong. Glory. Verse 23, Psalm, I mean, that was Numbers 23. Numbers 23, 23. Look at what it says. For there is no sorcery against Jacob, no divination against Israel. It must now be said of Jacob and of Israel, oh, what God is. There is no hex that anybody can place on you successfully. They can try, but it's not going to work. You're covered under the blood. I, I, heard, a, I, heard, a, I heard a witch doctor say that one common secret that was known in the occult world is the first thing they would ask you when you ask them to do something to somebody, are they a Christian? That's the first thing they would want to know. Now, some of them will take your money anyway because they like Baylor. They're for hire. But I want you to look at somebody and say, you can't curse what God has blessed. Tell your whole row, you can't curse who God has blessed. God saw Israel as righteous. The enemy saw them one way. Watch this. Stay with me. Stay with me. The enemy saw them as righteous. Because in verse 22, he told you, uh, 21, I'm sorry. In verse 21, he said, the shout of a king is among them. This is the enemy. So God saw them as righteous. The devil saw them as righteous. Go back to verse 23. He said in verse 23, there's no sorcery against them, no divination against them. It must not be said of Jacob and of Israel. Verse 24, oh, what God has done. Look, a people rises like lionesses and lifts itself up like a lion. It, I mean, he, he, he's telling you how beautiful Israel is. But the sad thing, God saw it. The devil saw it. But they didn't see it. They never knew who they were. So they took stuff they didn't have to take. Because they didn't know their value. When you know who you are. You don't settle for anything. Yes. 
they did not know. I'm coming, y'all. How they looked to God. You didn't, they, they didn't know. They didn't have no understanding of how God saw them. And the Bible said, go to Deuteronomy 23. He showed you why the curse turned into a blessing. Watch this. Deuteronomy 23. This messed me up. Deuteronomy 23, verse 5. He said, nevertheless, the Lord your God would not listen. But the Lord your God turned the curse into a blessing for you. Why? Because the Lord your God loves you. You didn't die because I love you. Tell somebody he loves me. I made you righteous because I love you. I made you who you are because I love you. You're here tonight. Not because of your goodness. Yeah. Hallelujah. I don't want to get caught up because I know I won't stop. But you're here tonight because he loves you. I didn't let the accident take you out. Because I love you. That relationship that tried to destroy you. I didn't let it prevail. Not because of your goodness. But because I... You need to tell your neighbor, God's in love with me. That's why. That's why. Not because you holy. Not because you don't smoke. Not because you don't drink. Not because you ain't had sex. Not because you ain't smoke and get high. No, that, I don't judge you by the flesh. Henceforth now we know no man after the flesh. I kept you for one reason. There's one reason that you are alive. There's one reason you are saved. And it's because he loved you. And you're going to keep on living beneath your privileges until you know how valuable you are to him. Tell somebody, I mean everything to him. And the difference, Brother Stevenson, between us and Israel is their righteousness was temporary. That's why they had to keep on giving sacrifices. But your righteousness is permanent. They could lose their righteousness. But your sins will I remember what? So watch, watch, watch. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. This is what he did. This is what he did. This is what he did. He said, I can't curse him. He said, we can't curse Israel. I'm trying. He, he went to every Holomoshite. End up going to four mountains. If you take the time and do the research, the four mountains are positioned like a cross. It was a mountain in the left, mountain on the right, mountain here, mountain there. But they were covered under the cross. And guess why you can't be cursed? Because of the cross. So look at what he did. Look what he did. Look what he did. He said, he said, this is what I'm going to do, Mother Drain. He said, I can't curse him. I can't. I I've tried. Hear me. So what we're going to do is we're going to send strange women.
What we're going to do is we're going to send strange women, pretty women, beautiful women, send something that's going to draw them. Send something that's going to get their attention. Here's the text. He sent strange women, pretty women. He said, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to send those strange women, pretty women, so they can marry them. And the women will turn their hearts. Sacrifices the covering is only when you stay with me but the enemy knows how to send a distraction to pull your heart away from God Couldn't curse you. Couldn't curse you. So I made you curse yourself. Couldn't do it. So the minute they start worshiping other gods, their judgment was exposed, their, their sin was exposed. And the judgment end up falling on them. But we don't have the blood of bulls. We got the blood of Jesus. And if you're born again for real, you might mess up. But you ain't leaving God. Ha! Oh, yeah. I say you, 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 you ain't, you got enough sense to tell somebody. I don't know what you're talking about. I ain't leaving God now. I might be out here acting crazy with you for a little while, but I know who God is and he good to me and I ain't leaving God for nobody. He the one keeping me. He the one didn't let me go crazy. Not libele koshaya. Shake three people say, he loves me, he loves me. You got a Presbyterian next to you. Tell somebody, he loves me. Hamanasi <laughs> Koshe. Ilabasha. I'm just coming to minister to some of y'all who know what it's like to mess up, do stuff you ain't got no business, but you can still look at folk in the club and say, I know who God is. <laughs> Baby, I might be in here, but don't you think for one minute, I don't know who God is, and if I don't get myself together, he ain't gonna let me rest out here. Ha-ya-ya-ya. Hele-bo-sha. hele bo that man is real. He won't let me go. Hiya. I tried, but he keep on coming after me. I tried to walk away, but he keeps on pursuing me. He does it because he loves me. If you be seated, all I need is five more minutes. I'm done. Hold on my shadow. Hele Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. I ain't saved because I came after him. I'm saved because he came after me. I ain't got no church in here. It's minding my own business. Trying to get high, but he wouldn't let me forget him. Got high and ended up speaking in tongues, y'all. Got drunk and started talking about Jesus. Because from the abundance of the heart, me hello Shaba handle a boko shete 
Now that's all I come to tell somebody in here. Don't you let the devil make you feel like God is mad at you. Shake somebody real hard and say, God's in love with you. Be seated. Be seated. Well, prophet, prophet, is it possible? Be seated, I'm coming. Is it possible for a Christian to fall under a curse from God? No. You can't fall under a curse because God told you can't nobody curse whom God is blessed. But what he'll do is he'll get you to accept the way the Havamashiah. He'll get you to accept the lie. Start believing that God's mad at you. Start believing that God's holding things against you. And if you're foolish, you'll accept his trick. Proverbs 26. One of my favorite scriptures. Verse 2. It says, Proverbs 26, 2. It says, I used, to, I used to quote this scripture all the time. Get to me in the King James. I used to quote this scripture all the time. And I asked God for a long time to explain it to me. And he finally did. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. Well, I, I understand the, the curse causeless shall not come. That just means that a curse can't fall without a reason. That's simple. But what about the first part? As the bird by wandering. What that mean? As a swallow by flying. You know, we be quoting stuff but don't know what it means. I never understood that. I never understood it. Bird by wonder, swallow by flying. Now, the Bible declares in Deuteronomy, I showed you, that the reason he turned the curse into a blessing was because he huh very important the reason you are here is because he okay so I looked at Matthew 10 29 and it said in Matthew 10 29 are not two sparrows sold for a farthing and not one of them shall fall on the ground without your father. Now, just to give you value, he's telling you that a sparrow is cheap. A farthing is equivalent to our penny. That you could buy two sparrows and cent. Then he came in Luke chapter 12, round about verse 6, and look at what he said again. Luke 12 and 6. Are not five sparrows sold for what? And not one of them. It's forgotten before God. Okay. So one cent give you two sparrows. Two cent give you five, which really means you get one for free. Do the math. Do the math. One cent, two. Two cent should give you four. But God throws one in for free. But what he's saying, Mother Green, is even though the sparrow is cheap and don't have much I love them so much that I don't even forget one 
that fall to the ground. And then he responds after that and said, did not I number the hairs? Here you are. You combed your hair today and some of it fell out. You don't know what number that was, but he does. He He loves you so much that he cares about what you throw away. And if I care for a sparrow, how much more do I care for you? Jesus is saying, basically, the revelation of Proverbs 26 is the curse comes to the individual who doesn't know his value. Tell somebody that man loves me. Don't be afraid to say, tell somebody he loves me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. And this is what I want you to get in your spirit. Chloe, he don't love. See, you got to stop seeing it like he loves us. See it like if you were the only person on earth, he would have still sent Jesus. That's, that's how valuable you are to me. That there are millions of people around the world who are Christian, who serve me. Yet when you leave me, I leave the 99. And I come and get. All these people. I got serving me. Millions telling me holy. But their holy don't sound like your holy. Their worship don't sound like your worship. Halabah Sunday. And I'm telling you that in a room of everybody telling me they love you, I can tell when I don't hear your voice. That's how valuable you are to me. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Lord Shabbat. Telemanda la kashaba, kila lemanda le osia. Telemanda na mahasa. Tell somebody he loves me. He loves me. Kamande yeba haba shakibo. That's how much he loves you. If when a when a parent has a child. This is a newborn, they start growing. That parent admires everything about that child. They be sitting there counting the hair, <laughs> looking at it. And it's true. When when somebody, when somebody be like loving you, loving you, I'm talking about like that next level loving you. They can tell you things about you that you don't even pay attention to. They, they, they even see the flaws on you and love it. You know, when you get mad, you just do your face a certain way and they'll say your one eyebrow go up and the other bit and they say, that's so cute to me.
because they admire and love you so much. Now, Mother Kelly, birds, when I wake up in the morning, I hear birds singing. Amen. She getting, she getting, it's all right, y'all. She getting, she getting a deliverance. I, I hear birds singing. They're happy. They never wake up with an attitude. Yea, yet your heavenly father cares more for you than a bird. Now, if you know how valuable you are to him, why are you waking up with an attitude? Nothing about my life could upset me because he loves me. Who love you? The king of the universe. I'm God's friend. Can nothing about you not liking me? You ain't got to speak to me. He spoke to me. You can roll your I don't care nothing about that. He loves me. I know y'all saying, Brother Khan, you taking your time. I'm going to take it. Because too many of y'all sitting up here trying to earn his love. He loves you. Watch this. The sparrows. Y'all sit down, I'm coming. The sparrows. The sparrows. Do you notice they get their supply from what you walk on? When I wake up and see a sparrow, they're pecking at the ground, looking for provision, singing why they're doing it. Now I'm walking on the ground, but they're pecking at it, looking for stuff. And he said, if I take care of the sparrows that fly in the air, how much more? What are you worried about? I'm not worried about my supply. I'm not worried about you worry so many people in here worry you're worrying about your life take no thought y'all don't want to hear this don't worry don't worry your supply is there but anxiety is hindering the pipe. I'm flowing. My love is flowing. My pelikosha. My provision is flowing. But your worry is hindering it from coming to you. Notice, look, kids, Bailey, Carly, Eli, Judah. They don't worry about nothing. Now, your child don't even know that your light's about to go off. You don't see your little child walking there times a mama look like the light's about to They trust.
they completely trust who birthed them. And you think I'm going to birth you and let you want for anything? Don't you know you mean more to me than a bird? Don't you know you mean more to me than grass? He said, consider the lilies of the field, which is today and gone tomorrow. You worried. I told you don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to drink. Don't worry about no clothes. Only reason you worry is you don't believe I love you. Tell somebody he loves, me. he loves me. How do I know? How do I know he loves me? And start believing it. Because some days, I do feel like he loves me. You know, some days you get in worship and you get that little fuzzy feeling. You go to weep. Oh, he loves me. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I love you, Jesus. La, 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 la. You know, that's a good day. Come on, that, that's a good day. But some days I feel a thousand miles away from him. Sometimes I feel like he's blessing everybody else. Y'all don't want to talk back to me. Looking over me and blessing other folk around me. What do you do? Feel like everybody being blessed but you. Everybody life is passing yours. I'm watching. Watching folk who got saved after me. Get like, look like they're getting blessed before me. I'm telling you that when you feel forsaken, stay with God long enough. You're going to feel that. Stick with him long enough. Stick with him long enough. Walk with God long enough. You're going to have some days that you don't want to go elebe koshai. You're going to have some days that even though you know greater is he that's in you, you're going to want to know where is the greater. Come on, see, y'all ain't talking back to me here. Where is that? Because I know you say it's in there, but I don't feel him right now. And when you have those days, you still act like he loves you. When you wake up on a day and you don't feel like he want to talk to you, talk to him anyway. When you feel like he's a million miles away, wake up and say, God, I don't feel you, but I know you love me. You love me so much, you died for me. You have to tell yourself that. Am I helping somebody? I wish you would look down your road one more time and say, he loves me. Can't be governed by what you feel. Sometimes when people have been through a divorce, bitterness comes in. Right? You get bitter. You get upset. Sometimes you get bitter that it even causes sickness. I'm coming. They just did a study and said, a doctor said that he can test your saliva and determine if you are sick from the saliva to determine your bitterness from your saliva. <laughs> that people who have joy and people who are anxious have a different saliva. No wonder why Jesus can spit on the ground.
he was so joyful that healing was in his saliva. So if I, if I, if I ever spray on you, don't be worried. You healed. I'm a joyful person. Say with me. But instead of, instead of forgiving the person who left them, they hold on to the pain. Watch it. Look at me. Please hear me. Let's say something. And the only reason you bitter and mad at anybody is because you don't believe God loves you. Because if you believed he loved you, you would know he has your future in his hands. That every part of my life I don't understand nothing about that is going to cause my stance to change because my steps see that that can't just be something y'all say you got to know that you got to know it's ordered even in the valley yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I'm not afraid tell somebody the Lord is with me Some people are just bitter. And it's rooted in you. Before anybody speaks, you already think they don't like me. They ain't even had they ain't even talk to you. You walk in the room thinking everybody against you. You bitter. You bitter. And see, some of y'all don't think y'all bitter because you don't think you're bitter with nobody. But sometimes that bitterness is rooted in a trauma from your childhood. And the worst thing a bitter person can do is be friends with bitterness. Because both of y'all are going to be old and sick together. Let me tell you something. When you happy, you speak to everybody. And you don't care who don't talk back to you. You ain't got to say hey to me. I don't care nothing about that. I'm not finna be mad at you because you mad at me. You don't control my mood. You want to be mad, be mad with your bad self. Old and sick. I'm serious. Give me a minute, I feel the anointing. I speak to you. You don't talk back to me. Guess what I'm going to do when I see you tomorrow? Speak again. Don't fool with people. Don't fool with people that say to you, why, why would you speak to them even though it's speak to you? They are dumb and going to be sick because they're bitter. I don't speak for you. I speak because the love of God is shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost. How you doing? I'm so happy that if you don't talk back to me, I'll say it again. You ain't hear me? I say, you ain't hear me talking to you. I know you heard me say hello. I know you heard me. But you speak to somebody, they don't speak to you, and now you sitting over there with it. You know what? I ain't gonna speak to them no more. I ain't, you so childish. You so childish. I feel sorry for you. You're childish. Nobody, nobody likes me. I try. I try to speak to people. But there's something about me that turns people off and they just don't speak to me. Ding that dizzy. Some of you never smile. Your disposition says, you better not talk to me. I'm up here preaching the joy of the Lord in the church. You sitting there.
them demons. That demon and mess up your countenance. You've entertained that spirit for so long, you can't even get a smile out. But you are released today because there's a revelation coming. He loves you. Tell somebody, smile. Now wait, some of y'all looked at somebody and said smile, they went. <laughs> smile. No joy. No joy. No joy. People stop believing God loves them. Tell your neighbor God loves you. Don't care if you don't like me. He loves me. I'm not enemies with nobody. He loves me. I, I don't got to fit in with y'all. You don't got to speak to me. You can stop loving me, but I'm going to keep on loving you. And I'm not going to get hooked up with nobody that's going to try to make me hate you. No, I'm too mature for that. That's school stuff. That's childhood stuff. Mad at somebody that ain't never did nothing to you because somebody next to you mad at Grow up. When you know God loves you, there's a shield around you. The Bible says, faith worketh by, faith worketh by love, cometh by hearing. But faith worketh by, faith worketh by. Now, I used to teach, I used to teach that that meant in order for your faith to work, you got to love. That if you don't have a strong love life, you know, then your, your love walk ain't strong. You're not going to be able to walk in faith. But the context of that is, faith works. Because you know he loves you. That's why my faith work. My faith doesn't work because of me. My faith work because I know somebody shout, he loves me. Okay, what you mean? Okay, okay. If I'm going through a sickness, me just saying by his stripes I'm healed without a revelation of what he did at Calvary and his love, that statement becomes just a formula. So then you'll be talking about, by his stripes I'm healed, by his stripes I'm healed, and wonder why you're not healed. Because you're saying it without the revelation that he loves me. And because he loves me, he hung on that cross and took my sickness and with his stripes. See, it's different. You, you can't just be quoting scriptures without a connection to what it means at Calvary. That I don't have to go through this suffering because he loved me so much that he went through the suffering for me. Are y'all listening to me? So I don't cast away my confidence. Are you understand? Because I know he loves me, I'm not concerned about my needs being met. So when I quote that my God shall supply, I ain't saying, I, I ain't really saying my God gonna do it. I'm saying my daddy. My daddy loves me. And because he loves me, he gonna supply all of my needs. You mad. See, look, mad, mad, mad at your future. Look at my life. See, there you go again. The only reason you're upset about where you are right now in life is you don't trust your daddy. Period. The child never questions the father. I'm talking about a real child. I'm not talking about a grown one. I'm talking about the one he said, except you be converted. The little child. If, if you can't relate to me, like a labo koshalamanda, dele me anzala kitia, if bele koshna, if you can't relate to me, like a little child, your relationship with me is always going to be hindered. Because as your parent, 
I'm going to take you down roads that you don't want to go through. I'm going to put you in situations that you don't want to be in. But if you love your mama and love your daddy, you understand that he loves me. So you ain't leading me nowhere to hurt me. You got to know that. Tell somebody, he loves, me. he loves me. You know why you curse? You don't know he loves you. First John 4 and 9. Look at what it says. In this the love of God is manifested toward us. That God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Look at the next verse. In this love. And in this is love. Not that we. Love come on. Not that we. Love but that he what? and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sin. That's not law, that's grace. Yeah. Under the law, it says nothing about God loving you. It tells you, you got to love God. With all your heart, all your soul, all your might. Nobody can do that. You don't have the capacity. You don't have the capacity to love God with everything. Not under the law, can't do that. None of them could do that. God demanded that you love him with everything. Are y'all listening to me? But grace now says, I think it's around about verse 19. Grace now says, look at what it says in verse 19 of the same chapter. It says to us, we love him. The emphasis is not on how much you love him. But it's on how much he loves you. Now, can I say something to you? String softly. Listen to me. A child will never know the extent that your parent loves you. You will never know. I don't care if you got a good mom, a good daddy, who I'm telling you, you will never know the magnitude. You don't never know how much they would do for you. And why they are so hurt when you make bad decisions. You don't know how that feels to them. But the only reason it hurts them is because they love you. You got people that you make bad decisions around, they don't care. They'll push you to make the bad decision. Come on, let's get high together, come on. You driving drunk, come on, we gonna believe God. Serious. I shared this in Houston. You know, I know sometimes we Pentecostals want to go. There's a way he's going to come through here in a minute. But it's going to be a blanket of his love. Because that's what brings deliverance. I shared this in Houston. And I said, um, anybody in here has ever has anyone in here ever dealt with someone who had cancer? Raise your hand. Okay. Put your hand down. If a person whom you love real bad, I mean you love them. When you love them, because of how much you love them, you hate the cancer. Now, somebody else can be dying with cancer, but it doesn't affect you like the person whom you love. Because you feel like that cancer is taking them away from you. So imagine you got lung cancer. And I know you got lung cancer. But you choose to smoke. 
and I love you. I'm not mad at you, but now I'm, I'm hurt that you say you love me too. And you're not willing to make the adjustment. So we can have more time together. If you, if you love me, like you say you do, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pour out all my love on you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to I'm, I'm pour out all my love on you. I'm going to pour it out. But the only reason you're going to be able to love me back under new covenant, the only reason you can love him back is because he first loves you. Once you know how much God loves you, you're going to end up loving him. There's a missionary that went into an asylum, and when he went into an asylum, all the people in there was crazy. He went inside this asylum with all these crazy folk that was in there making noises, doing silly stuff, acting all crazy. It was so bad, there was feces, urine all over the ground. They asked him to come in there. He was supposed to go in a certain part, but he ended up in the real crazy part and was in there. And when he got ready to tell the people to let him out, Jesus said, I sent you in here. He went inside there, found a clean spot. God told him to sit there in a clean spot and say, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. That's all he did. Sung that for one straight hour and left. Came back a second time. Came back a third time. Four times in a week he would come. Second week, went back. Never preached, never prayed. Just got in that spot and said, Yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, Jesus loves me. Two months later, I'm sorry, a month later, a second lady, one of the crazies, sat with him and started singing yes Jesus loves me oh yes Jesus loves me right two months later just from him singing yes Jesus loved me God told him to go there for two months the last time God said don't go back 95% of everyone in there was discharged. No prayer. Now, while you are preaching to your kids, why don't you just take the time to tell them, he loves you, baby. No judgment, no fighting. When they come in and you smell the weed on them. He love you, baby. When they come in trying to hide from you. Because they don't want, let them know you don't have to be shamed. He loves you. When they come home pregnant, you don't kill them. Don't throw them away. I love you, baby. When they come in, don't know their identity. She tell me something she like girls. He tells them he like boys. I love you, baby.
Colobo City le mea. Don't fight him. Minister the love of God. How far would you be if somebody told you he loved you? How many years did you search for love? Looking for somebody to validate you. All because you didn't know he loves you. Daddy, mama, dealing with folk that you never would have dealt with. Because you didn't know your value. He loves me. He loves me. He loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Come on. He loves us. Come on. He loves. Hey, lift your hands, everybody. Come on. He Come on. Hey. Oh, he loves. Everybody. He loves. Come on. Oh, he Lift your hands in here. He loves us. He
worship. He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. He got my life. My life is in your hands. My future is in your hands. Oh, I feel this love in here. Yeah, me shake it. He loves me. Hey, he loves me. He loves me. <laughs> he loves me. Hallelujah. Alemando Bokoshebe. Yaba Shate. Yemanda Lebe Kabosha. Yaba Si. Yado Bokoshe. with you. Alabed Kolamando, my thoughts towards you, they are good. They are not evil. I love you. I don't remember your sins. I'm not angry with you. You are my prized possession. Yayo, Alabed Kosha, Landa Labo Kosha. I wish I had worship her. Yay! your voice. Let him love on you. Lift your hands and receive his love. Hey! 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 What up? Zeme! Kalamosha! Kalamando! Everlasting love. I'll never throw you away. I'll never give up on you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Come on. Rest in his love. Rest in his love. Hey, I'm not angry. I'm not angry with you. I'm not mad at you. I love you. Hey. And because I love you. 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 With my stripes. You are healed. You know I know. The coach The commando. The cantalo shade. Oh, I feel the love of God. Somebody's daughter's being delivered. Somebody's son is being set free. The love of my mind shake. Let him love on you. Let him love on you. Let him love on you. Hey. Hey. Hi, y'all. in here the presence of G 
Jesus. Hey, let your daddy love on you. He loves me. hands. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, who you are, who you are, and I'm loved by, come on, who I am, who I am, who I am. You're a good, good father. Tell him. Your hands and work. 
25 and under, run up here and get this. If you're 25 and under, run up here and lift your hands. The presence of God, get up here. God's about to touch you. Hey, go on by shake it. Get up here, close as you can. Hey, hey, lift your hands. 25 and under. Get up here. Come on, get him up. Get him up. Hey. Ho. Oh. He's here. Hey. Get up here. Hey. The presence of God is about to come on you. The love of my mama will shake. Hey, la, la. Hey, la, la. So cold. The love will shake. Hey. Just stop right there. Lift your hands, the brothers of God. Let him love on you. Let him love on you. Let him love on you. Hey, lift your hands. It's fine, it's fine. Lift your hands and let him love on you. Right where you are, lift your hands and let him love on you. Close your eyes. This is your moment. This is your moment. This is your moment. This is your moment. Close your eyes. Lift your hands. Every young person, every person in here, close your eyes. Lift your hands and let God love on. Hey, Rolabashi, Menkele Bosha, Ilamabasha. Oh, I feel that anointing. Come on, brothers, get ready. The presence of God is about to hit these young folk. Turn the lavalier on in the house. Turn the lavalier on. Turn the lavalier on. Turn the lavalier on.
Disappointed, your sins I will remember. No, get that out of her. No more. No more. No more. Olo bosha, kile mando, koli libiansa. He loves you. He loves you. Ole be sheke le mando. Robo sutu le mande. Lift those hands all over this room. Kalabashanda. Hey, I break that yoke up off of you. Be free tonight. Be free tonight. Koninia yele o shaba. Ele basando. Yen Quebecus Malolo Bobos Eleba Sikiando Lolo Bobos The power of God. Lift your hands. Lift those hands. Lift those hands. Lift your hands. Close your eyes. Lift those hands high. Close your eyes. Every eye closed. Every hand uplifted. 
All I want you to say is, Daddy, Daddy. Love, on me. love on me. Now close your eyes and let him do it. Receive that love. Oh. Shabba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ela ba shande, ele be kosha. The presence of God is moving in this room. Ele bo, ele bo. Kalamande le masi. Lift those hands. He's here. He's here. here. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Come on. Everybody sing it from your heart. Come on. It's mine.
Lift your hands. He's here. Lift those hands. Lift those hands. He's here. My God, he's here. He's here. I'm on the On a boat My God! My God! My Father, my Father! Somebody release a shout at this room! Ah! 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am, I am uh, personally struggling with what to do in this atmosphere. I don't want to compete with the Holy Ghost. You know, I have my plans to move prophetically and share with you things that God has shared with me in this coming year. But I've been given an assignment to the body to preach everywhere that God loves you. I preach it to the mountaintop. My response to his love is my soul. Love Jesus. My soul. Akashaba. Love Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. Bless his name. Hold on. My 
better scream. You better. You better praise him. Like you done lost your mind. The Bible declared that the glory was so strong that even the priest could not enter. Get what you need. Get what you need. Break cake. Let Kosha look at her. You praise your God. You praise your God. Get what you need. Hey. Shut down. Shut That's tangible. That's tangible. 
100 people to dance on the next thing. Dance now. Hey, come on. Come on. Come on. Hey. Come on. Hey. 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 Koshia <laughs> Hey, Hato! Hano! Hataya! Hey, Hataya! 
spirit but I tell you this much tell somebody on the left and the right whoever I don't care tell them whatever it was that was bothering you it'll never bother you again Jesus, Jesus, I break that yoke. I break that yoke off of your mind. Rekebe kato, lukusha, rakala la banda lekete, le ba 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 si kala bando, rokala la ba ba konche, lekela le banda la ba katia, rakela be kusha, raka. Something is breaking in here. Ah, shame. Shame! Shame! Go! It is so. It is so. How shame? It is I'm not about to see you. Oh, praise him. I love you. Kashande. trying to be churchy but I'm just being spiritual I'm just being spiritual it's we ain't been in church long for nothing check your clock it's midnight Paul and Silas come on come on come on let the prison doors open the chains fall. You better pay. Hey, come on. Hey, <laughs> hey. Hey. Yes. yourself into a new season. You done praise yourself into a new place. Not go for it.
get your communion. Get your communion. Get the table. Ole mashe kele mando. Get your communion. Orobo shike. Ele malakushala. Imanosa. Imaneke shele banda la kita. E kamando lo ho shaba. E manani o siya. E nananande ke shaba. Ho! E la manala la. O kamando la to shaba. Haya! Woo! Hato! Honda la bo ho shaba. Haya! Shaya! Ho! Shay! Haya! Shande me he. He 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 he. Halaba shandia. In the Osea, in Shaba, Ho! He love us Sunday. My call out to you. Power! Ho! Osea. Hey! Handle the Osea. And I see. In the Thank you, Jesus. I told somebody. I told somebody, I told somebody, I don't know what happened on the day of Pentecost, but I do know whatever happened made the people think they was drunk. You didn't hear what I just said. Look down your arms so every now and then you need a good drink. Excuse me if I'm acting a little drunk tonight. But one encounter with Jesus. You will never be the same again. You will never be the same again. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. He going down in your belly tonight. I say he going down in your belly. Hey. Never be the same. We'll never be the same. Going down on the inside, you'll never be the same again. Amen. Amen. This is going to be a good year. Either by Sunday, every giant in the land got to die. Because I'm going to possess my promise. Now we got to get out of here, it's late. But I'm gonna get mine this year. Devil, you should have killed me in December. Too late now, too late now, too late now. Hey, Kashi, Kato, Papa, he Ponce, let Kalabo Yotosha. Woo! Alabasha. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you so much. You got your communion. God is good. I love you so much. Thank you, KCC, for being a church that don't rush your pastor. I've been good all. I've been good for about two months. So be nice to me tonight. Say amen. Say amen. And I want to tell you something else. Somebody in here, whatever spirit been messing with you at your house, 
stopping you from sleeping and resting. I dare you to tell somebody you're going to sleep like a baby from this night forward. You will not be tormented. You, Bakke, you condo. You will not be tormented. You will not be tormented. Amen. You hear me very well. If you don't hear nothing else, you hear me good. You hear me strong. I mean what I'm about to say. You tell somebody the prophet said. Come on, find somebody that got power when they talk. Say the prophet said. This year, God going to rest your family. I'm talking about your daddy. I'm talking about your sister. Your children. Your brother. He cannot have your family. He can't have your son. Can't have your daughter. Holy Ghost is going to rest them. Now shout for your family. It is so. Let's go, y'all. Um, stand up. Let's take communion. Oh Hallelujah. Listen. Tonight. We're going to do two things. We're going to take communion. Amen. Amen. When we get done taking communion, when we get done taking communion, I would not do this unless I was challenged by the Holy Ghost. Um, I told y'all the other day that you were going to turn on the news and there was going to be a big airline crash. Told you I seen airline chaos. I said some going big news on the story about the airlines. It looked like, looked like something going on over there in Japan. Earthquake and then this airline and there's another earthquake about to hit another Asian country. Everything gonna be big this year. Everything gonna be uncovered. Amen. It's not just gonna be like I told y'all the other night. It's not just going to be like big. It's just going gonna, gonna to be big, humongous, massive, gigantic companies, large companies that's been around for years going to start going bankrupt. Everything is about to shift. America, as you know it, is going to change. But we're going to be all right. Because the people who know their God are going to be strong. Tell somebody, I'm going to do exploits. Amen. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. We're going to trust God. We're going to take communion. Some of you may not know it, but all kind of healing is taking place in here tonight. Deliverance, heal, strongholds, appetites, passions. He took away that stony heart and gave you a heart of flesh. We're going to believe God. Go ahead and get your communion ready. Separate the bread from the wine. Hallelujah. God is real. And um, when you take this communion, you got to know his body was beat for your healing. I would tell you to turn my uh, lavalier on, but is that, uh, uh, turn it on. 
you hear me? Okay, if you can't, just know we're a little drunk today. As soon as I get done serving this communion, as soon as I get done serving this communion, um, I'm challenged by the Lord to challenge every person in this room tonight to sow a seed of $50. As soon as communion is done, we're going to sow that. And I know we gave our special seed, but the Lord is challenging five people in here tonight, I believe, to sow a seed of $1,000. Um, pray for me, because tomorrow I'll, I'll be preaching in Raleigh, Durham, or Durham, one of them, um, with Bishop Bloomer. And then Thursday and Friday, I'll be in uh, Newport News, Virginia. And so I'm moving. I'm going back on the road this year, but uh, while I'm doing that, I'm, I'm gaining territory, possessing the land. When I say I'm going to take over the world, I hope you have enough sense to know I ain't talking about me. Because mm. I can do all things right. through Christ that strengthens me. So I want you to um, take the bread knowing that by his stripes you were healed and they are uh, they beat that body down for your healing that one they beat that body down for your healing and you don't have to accept no sickness Amen. you're going to live a long time and tell somebody you're going to be old and strong. Old and strong. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we're going to take communion knowing that with his stripes you were healed. Every infirmity Every disease can't live in your body. That after tonight, you won't even have a cold. Amen. 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 I like mine a little heavy. <laughs> oh, mine already there. Oh. Let me pour some more in there. Amen. I need as much Jesus blood as I can get. More grace. <laughs> Amen. But we believe God for the miraculous. As soon as I'm done, we're going to sow this seed of $50. I don't want to wait. don't want to hesitate. I want everybody to do it that can. They'll give you ways to give on the screen. You're going to just lay it at the altar. As soon as I'm done, get done taking communion, you're going to lay it at the altar. The five of you to give a thousand, I don't even have to know who you are. Just lay it at the altar. What an anointing that hit this place. He said, take and eat this in remembrance of me. Because when you do it, you show forth his death. Mm -hmm. Until he come. Yes. They whip that man's body. For you. No tumor. Mm. No disease. No boil. Ooh. No infirmity. Eczema. Mm. No rash. Mm. Can live on your body. Say, Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. That you healed me. That you healed me. At Calvary. At Calvary. I'll take this bread. I'll take this bread. Your body. Your body. 
for my healing. For my healing. And, I declare, and I declare right now, right now by, your strike, by your strike, I am, I am healed. healed. Call out whatever your heal does right now. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take you need all of it. Hallelujah. And without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Say, I am forgiven. I am forgiven. Got to know that. I pray somebody leave out of here knowing that Jesus loves you. Because your sins have been washed away. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but God love. Father, I thank you. Thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. That on a hill called Calvary, hill called Calvary you, washed my sins away. you washed my sins away. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That my sins are washed. That my sins are washed. And I am, and I am the, righteousness of God. the righteousness of God. Drink all of it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Get your seed now and just lay it at the altar. However you give it, even if you're giving by phone, electronically, just come and touch the altar with your phone. But everybody give. Everybody. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Given by card, someone's up here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, blessed Jesus. Thank you for your presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're holy. Given by card, somebody's on the left and somebody's on the right. Thank you, Lord. My God, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. I give you the praise. Thank you, blessed Jesus. Hallelujah. 
How long y'all been married? Huh? Six days. Today. Six days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, where y'all go to church at? Roanoke Rapids. Where that's at? On the other side of the Raleigh. That's about four hours. Three and a half. But I, y'all be driving here on, I mean, that's a long little drive. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. I'll talk to you another time. Praise the Lord. Go ahead. Bye bye. God bless you. I'll see you. I'll get you on a Sunday. Well, come on back. Let me tell you. Come on. The Lord's going to give you clear direction and show you exactly what to do. He's going to make it easy for you. Whatever transition you want to make, he's going to help you to make it. Sometimes we're loyal, connected. The Spirit of God is going to challenge you. He's going to put everything in place so you can do what he's called you to do. You're challenged by the Lord. I tell you, just get ready for what he's going to do in your life. Whatever business venture y'all are trying to start up and put together, he's about to breathe on it. And it's going to be a season of unremarkable favor. Do not give up. Don't throw in the towel. There's a hunger that's been birthed in you for more. God's going to give you the desires of your heart. Father, I thank you for giving them the grace to make the transition. Make it easy. Make it so easy. In Jesus' name. It is so. Standing on your feet, let's get out of here. Love you. Thank you for being patient with us tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Sir, what, sir, in the blue over there with the red bow tie, what kind of work you do? Come here. Glory. Malasha. All right. Ain't God real? I said, ain't God real? Lift your hand. I'm just going to pray for you and bless your life. Increase you and establish your going. Thank you, Lord, for showing them what to do. Give them clear direction. Yep, that's right. And do it for your glory. I give you the praise for what you're doing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sir, with that red shirt and black. Yeah, lift your hand. Whatever bad report you got, God said, I'm changing the opinion of the of of, of, of the doctor. And he's giving you a miracle. He's giving you a new heart, and he's giving you a new lung. The strength of God is coming to you today. You'll never be the same after today. Lift your hands. I command you to be completely healed. I don't care who had strokes in your family. You're not going to have another one. God is going to restore your health in Jesus' name. All right, if God's real, oh, bless him. Now go to his house and put it in order. That's right. Putting your house in order. Putting your house in order. He's putting your house in order. Oh, putting your house in order. Amen. Be at peace in Jesus' name. It is well. God bless you. I can tell. Amen. You are blessed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, that's your son? Okay, praise the Lord, mama. Hallelujah. They got food in the back. It's not so heavy tonight. I think they got uh, chicken alfredo, shrimp alfredo, shrimp scampi, chicken marsala, salmon, rice, broccoli, toss salad, and bread. Be healthy for once in your life. Amen. But we love you so much. We're praying for you. And uh, I believe in you. Are y'all praying for me? Yeah.
escaped me but before the Lord and um, great things. Great things are on the horizon for your life. Great things on the horizon for your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, I bless your people. I thank you for that anointing that has permeated this atmosphere. May this church never be the same. May the people in the sanctuary never be the same. May their lives be changed as a result of what you've done in this place tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hug somebody and tell them I love you and you can't do nothing about it. I told you that you were going to enjoy the service. I told you that uh, you were going to hear this word and want to be a part of it. So I want you to do me a favor. Stay in contact with us. You can catch us on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, whatever. All of the handles are there at the bottom of the screen. And I want you to stay in contact with us. I'm usually at all the locations that I minister the Word of God with power. It's one thing to watch online, but it's another thing to get in the atmosphere and feel that anointing and that power. So there may be someone watching who you are not saved. Let me go ahead and lead you in the sinner's prayer. Romans chapter 10 verse 9. If you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Now, uh, all you got to do is believe that. Amen. And if you believe that, the word of God declares you are saved. It's not about dotting every I and crossing every T, but you believe that. Confess it. And guess what? You are saved. So I want you to make sure Romans 10 and 9, getting a good Bible believing church and if you can't find one where you are, well, guess what? You can be an e-member of Kingdom City Church where you can come on, connect with us, fellowship with us. You can know what's going on. And even though you're not here, you can be here because we're going to make it our business to make sure that you are involved. Well, keep on watching. Listen to this over again. It's the law of repetition that causes something to become real. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Send me your comments, send me your emails, let me know how much you're enjoying it, and show us what I can do to be a better pastor and a better leader so that your life can be changed. I love you so much, and again, more grace.